So the first risk factor is endometrial hyperplasia. Endometrial hyperplasia is an abnormal thickening of the endometrium. And this is essentially a pre-malignant thickening of the endometrium. So this is one step on the way toward endometrial cancer. Another risk factor is polycystic ovary syndrome or anovulation. So the reason that this is going to be a risk factor is because in polycystic ovary syndrome and the condition of anovulation, there's not going to be ovulation. So no release of an egg. There's not going to be a transition into the luteal phase because there's not going to be a transition into the luteal phase. We're not going to get that progesterone and that progesterone acts like the lawnmower. It helps to restrain and inhibit the growth of the endometrium. So because of that anovulation that we see from polycystic ovary syndrome and other conditions, we're not going to have that progesterone. There's not going to be that progesterone around. And then another risk factor is hormone replacement therapy, especially hormone replacement therapy that is unbalanced, meaning that there is no progesterone with it. If it's just an estrogen-based hormone replacement therapy, then we're not going to have that progesterone to help balance or counteract the growth on the endometrium. Both of these are examples of unopposed estrogen. So again, we mentioned that progesterone will act to inhibit the growth of the endometrium. It acts to oppose the effects of estrogen. So in these examples that we just showed here, these are going to be risk factors that have to do with unopposed estrogen. Some other risk factors that can increase the risk of endometrial cancer include obesity and diabetes. The reason that these are risk factors is that diabetes is associated with obesity and obesity has to do with increased adipose tissue or increased fat cells. Those fat cells actually convert precursors, steroid precursors, into estrogen. And again, that increased estrogen from those fat cells, that adipose tissue, is going to act on the endometrium. It's going to lead to thickening of the endometrium. So the patient is going to have more exposure to estrogen. Another risk factor is nulliparity. Nulliparity is not having any children or not giving birth. So the reason that this is the case is because you can imagine that you're going to have multiple menstrual cycles over the course of a lifetime. Whereas if there were pregnancies, there would not be that menstrual cycle that the patient is experiencing over and over again. So that would reduce the amount of menstrual cycles that a patient experiences. Another risk factor for getting endometrial cancer is early menarche and or late menopause. So early menarche, menarche means the first onset of a period in a young female patient's life. So the first period, if it's early on in their life, that means that they're going to have multiple menstrual cycles throughout their life. They're going to be exposed to estrogen longer in their life. And related to this is late menopause. And in this definition, late menopause is greater than 52 to 55 years of age. And this too is going to prolong the patient's exposure to estrogen throughout their life. So early menarche and late menopause are both going to increase the span of time whereby a patient is exposed to estrogen. And that estrogen exposure, again, leads to the thickening of the endometrial lining or the endometrium and increases the risk for endometrial cancer. Increasing age is also another risk factor for endometrial cancer. Again, this all has to do with similar things we talked about before. Family history. So if there's a family history of endometrial cancer, you're more likely to also have it. There may be a genetic predisposition that runs in the family. Genetic conditions like Lynch syndrome or also known as hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. This is because there are DNA mismatch repair proteins that are mutated in this condition. And this increases the risk of not only endometrial cancer, but also other cancers as well. So this would be considered a familial cancer syndrome. So it also increases the risk of colon cancer. Other cancers can also increase the risk of endometrial cancer. So if there's a history of having certain types of cancer, like ovarian granulosa cell tumors, breast cancer, or colon cancer, these can all increase estrogen levels. And as I mentioned before, estrogen is going to act on the endometrium to increase the thickness of the endometrium, increase the cell divisions of the endometrium, and essentially increase the risk of mutations occurring in the endometrium. And then tamoxifen use is also another risk factor. Tamoxifen is a chemotherapy used to treat breast cancer. It's anti-estrogenic in the breast tissue, but it's pro-estrogenic or it acts to increase estrogen signaling in the uterus or in the endometrium. So that is the reason why we can see tamoxifen use being a risk factor in endometrial cancer. Now, along with these risk factors, there are 
certain things that can reduce the risk of endometrial cancer. Combined oral contraceptive use reduces the risk. So combined oral contraceptives have both estrogen and progesterone. So you may be wondering, okay, we're giving a patient estrogen, but the levels of estrogen in combined oral contraceptive pills are actually lower than those that would be exposed in a patient who is undergoing a menstrual cycle. And these pills also have progesterone, so that would be protective against the estrogenic effects on the endometrium. These are going to be especially important in patients who experience anovulation, so patients with polycystic ovary syndrome, for instance, or PCOS, and patients who are nulliparous. So these are going to help reduce the effects of each menstrual cycle, and especially in the cases of anovulation where there's no progesterone to counteract the estrogenic effect on the endometrium. Weight reduction is also important as well. We talked about adipose tissue increasing the conversion of steroid precursors into estrogen. So because of decreased weight, that's going to decrease levels of estrogen, leading to decreased risk of endometrial thickening and endometrial cancer. Late menarche, early menopause, and multiparity are all things that will decrease the risk of endometrial cancer. So again, this all makes sense. Late menarche, early menopause are both going to shorten the time span whereby a patient experiences exposure to estrogen. And then multiparity does the same. After delivery of a baby, breastfeeding exclusively also reduces the risk as well because the prolactin from breastfeeding helps to inhibit your menstrual cycles. So that is also going to reduce the estrogen exposure as well. And then interestingly, smoking is associated with a reduced risk of endometrial cancer. So patients who smoke are actually at a reduced risk of endometrial cancer, although this would never be advised because smoking increases the risk of so many other types of cancer. But I also want to mention that here because this is an interesting educational point. And there is some hypothesis as to why this may be, but it may be that the smoking reduces the risk of endometrial cancer due to earlier onset of menopause.